lot of believers, the current diet we're used to when we gather might look a bit like this. A teaspoon of prayer, a portion of singing with loud music, a healthy dose of giving money, followed by setting in the meat of one person talking for an extended period of time. As the dessert, there's an opportunity to raise your hand or come to the front or repeat a few words and feel better for the experience, followed, of course, by some good coffee. This might vary from place to place. Some may have a more formal structure, which includes special uniforms for the main players and set words for people to say and to sing. Others might be a bit more relaxed and have moments of spontaneous expression. As long as, of course, it stays within the confines of the agreed times, especially so that we can leave on time to have the good coffee. Now, I'm not saying that this is all necessarily wrong, except, of course, for the coffee, uh, because you should know I prefer the orange juice. Or I'll have a water. No, having thought about that, just give me the orange juice. Seriously, though, when we gather, do we come as spectators or participants? When we gather, are we there to be passive recipients? Or is there an element in which we can come prepared to engage and interact? Allow me to suggest some key ingredients we're given as to what we do when we gather and how that can help us to see the crucial role each one of us can play. There are several scriptural nudges that suggest that when we gather, we should be looking to see how can we build each other up in Christ. It's something that every follower of Jesus can do. We're able to do that because if we're following Jesus, we are being built up by him through life's various episodes. Every follower of Jesus engages with him in some way, and if we receive from him, we can have something to share with others from what we've received. When we gather, there's a glorious opportunity for us to communicate with God together. Targeted, specific prayers from the saints for a purpose. We're together because of God. We can use the opportunity to pour ourselves out to God in the way of prayer. We're together. We can share the issues of life with each other. And then as we do that, we can do what we're told by worrying about nothing, but praying about everything. It's a great time to learn how to pray from each other as well. And it's also a great time to see God operate through carrying each other's burdens and seeing what he does with them as we give them to him. Have you noticed in the listing of gifts in the New Testament that singing isn't in there? We know that to be able to sing well is clearly a wonderful ability that is not for everyone. But everyone can sing and everyone is encouraged to sing. Even if you're not among the talented singers, you're still able to sing and indeed be encouraged, consoled, challenged or inspired by a song. When we gather, you might have a song that's really been good for you in a given period of time. The instruction to sing psalms and spiritual songs isn't something that's specifically meant for the person who has the voice of an angel. Great truths about who God is and how he wants us to be are expressed marvelously in song and you might have something special to offer when you share your song. There is no doubt we need to hear from the Lord as we gather. We may be accustomed to the idea of one person talking for an extended period of time, but there are other ways in which the Word of God can be communicated and we don't just have to be an observer. You might have read something inspired that pointed you to Christ. You might have watched a clip or a video that was particularly helpful you experience God support you through a trying time. You might need to experience God to support you as you go through a trying time. 
these are ways in which the Word of God can be communicated. Consider the ways that we can communicate with each other in a way that pleases God and supports each other. Maybe a lesson, maybe a revelation, might be an insight, could be a word of warning, could be a word of wisdom. All of these are ways in which the Word of God can be communicated and it doesn't have to take 45 minutes and include a funny story. When we gather in the name of Jesus, we should experience a truly safe space in which we can express whatever God has placed on our hearts, as well as have the opportunity to consider and explore together in dialogue whatever challenges we may face as we follow him. All of this is in a bid to build each other up as the word of Christ dwells in us richly. Followers of Jesus will hear him speak to them in a variety of ways as they walk with him. And as they rely on the Holy Spirit, they can receive the help they need to express that so that the family of God can be built up. What if we had it in mind when we gather to be prepared to offer something more than just excellent miming skills or full-throated singing or indeed the money for offering time? What if we had it in mind when we gather to be prepared to offer a song, a word, a prayer? What if we had it in mind when we gather to be prepared to give, to share, to offer in order to build up each other? What if we considered that when we gather, the Lord Jesus is in charge of operations and directs what happens by his Holy Spirit as he pleases? What if we allow Jesus to lead the gathering to include offerings from some of us as we've come prepared and from some of us as he inspires us at the time? What if we could see that this can be a way in which Jesus builds his body when we gather. Thank you so much for listening. For his name's sake, C.L.J. Dryden. Shalom.